and hello again my friends on YouTube. I bet you didn't expect another toy review video so soon, especially one that wasn't related to Sonic. But when I found that crab meat figure in Target, I also saw the first wave of the Transformers Legacy figures. Um, so basically, what if a character that wasn't from G1 continuity was in G1 style? We've never done this before, right? Oh, ex except when we put Lugnut in the, in the Generations line, and except for when we put um, um, Stryka and Obsidian in the Generations line, and oh, oh yeah, and when we put a, uh, when we put um, Chromia, wait, not Chromia, but we we've done this before, is what I'm saying. But this is like the latest iteration of it. And this is the Transformers Prime version of RC in G1 style. Um, now here's the thing. Remember, RC is my favorite character from Transformers. And Prime RC is my favorite version of RC. So this is, the, this is my favorite version of my favorite character. And now she's been G1ified. Um, I don't really think that they that they needed to do that because the Transformers the Transformers Prime aesthetic is iconic, but oh whatever. Anyway, let's take a look at this packaging. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, one thing you may have noticed and has been very a very uh, notable thing on the internet is that there's no longer any plastic um, covering up the shell. Uh, Hasbro is trying to commit to using less plastic, at least um, less plastic in the packaging so that they don't cause as much pollution because like cardboard is nice and biodegradable and and uh, stuff like that. It won't end up in our oceans. And um, people were concerned that this would cause people to vandalize or steal the figures through the bubble. Um, and that is a valid concern, but in RC's case, I think she's safe because she's pinned in by this big piece of cardboard that's holding her back kibble. Although it does make it look misleading since this is covering her back kibble. It makes the figure look a lot cleaner than it actually is. And it, her accessories are in there, but they're so deep inside, like, you wouldn't really be able to get at them without, without, like, tearing the box open anyway like if if someone was that committed to getting in there to steal an accessory then whether there was a plastic shield in front of the figure or not wouldn't stop that um and as you can see i had my ring light turned off for this exact reason because even though there's no plastic it's still very reflective but yeah get you got some very good glamour shots very nice pictures i like the way that she's drawn on the side of the box um, and I see, like, they got little, they got bulkhead down there too, because they did make a G1 style bulkhead, which means he's square now instead of round. Um, but I, I didn't get him because, you know, he's a Voyager figure. I don't really collect Transformers in that scale. The back of the box shows the usual stuff, robot mode, vehicle mode, 20 steps for the transformation. Wow. And of course, tech specs and a QR code to scan. Um, but yeah, like we got... We have RC with um, a G1 style face, meaning she has lips and a nose. All right, sure, we'll run with that. But um, enough looking at the packaging. Let's go ahead and open this up and see if this if this version holds up to the legacy that is Prime RC. Wow, folks, this might be one of the most awkward damn toys I ever handled. Like. Seriously, she feels really weird. Like, she wants to collapse on me every time I touch her. Like, nothing on her really feels like it pegs in very securely. And half of her is, like, assembled. Like, like her entire backpack kibble is in two different pieces in the back of the box. <clears throat> like, like, actually, look, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and just... See? This, this part is... And the wheel, like, they're just not on there in the box. You gotta put them on yourself. It's, it's really weird. Like, and this, this just feels like some assembly required because we couldn't think of a way to package her better. Like, it, it doesn't feel like, it, it's really weird is what I'm trying to get at. Like, like, that thing doesn't come, that, 
This does not peg in anywhere else. It doesn't become a shield, it doesn't become a weapon or anything. It simply is designed to come off so that the figure can be put into packaging and then you have to, and then when you take it out of the packaging, you have to put it on. It, that's it. Uh, she also like, the backs of her legs look really hollow with those, like it looks like a pneumatic, it looks like you could see her pneumatic skeleton underneath. Um, and like, if you look at the way her, like, Look at this. She has no back, really. Um, this feels like a Hero Factory figure. Yeah, yeah. Like, the Hero Factory figure, like, they had, like, that those ball joints underneath that made a skeleton, and then you would clip on armor pieces, but if you looked at them from behind, it just looked like a hollow skeleton with a shell on the front of it. That's what this feels like. This is a Hero Factory figure. Like, I don't think I like it. I, I, like, at all, really. I don't. Um, well, let's try to give her a fair shake. Uh, she has a head that's ball-jointed. Can look up a pretty decent amount. Can look left and right. Head sculpt is pretty decent. Yeah, that's that looks like Prime RC's helmet and her little pink highlights and stuff. It's just with a face that has a nose and mouth. And, you know, lips. Okay. So, like, if G1 RC was wearing Prime RC's helmet, I guess that kind of works. And it is a light-piped figure, so that's why the eyes look so dark right here. I don't have a light to put in the back of her head right now. Um, shoulders are pin discs. They rotate all around. Uh, there is a There is a bicep swivel and an elbow that gets a 90-degree bend. Fists are on swivels. There's a swivel for the fist. Uh, she kind of has a waist joint, but it's kind of restricted. Uh, pin disc hips, no ball joints, they're pin discs. Uh, swivel on the thigh, which is fine. The knee gets a, a 90 degree, and you can then it the armor, like this is a transformation thing that looks so messed up that that's not articulation. Uh, feet have some tiltage, not a lot of tilt compared to how much tilt these guys usually get. And there is a toe joint. Um, yeah, so the articulation loadout's there. She's pretty poseable, can get a flat foot stance. Um, although, besides that, besides, besides all that, I thought that this figure was broken in the packaging because, um, there's a thing here, this thing. Um, it's the secret to making her transform, and it's, it's way too easy, like, in the, in the box is like this, and I honestly thought my figure was broken. It took me several minutes to figure out what was wrong with the figure, and that's, like, there just isn't enough leverage to get this, like, this, this click is very important to keep the figure from flopping backwards, and it's actually pretty difficult to do. Like, a kid might not figure it out. I mean, heck, I was, I'm a grown-ass man looking directly at the instructions, and I took several minutes to figure out how to get that to stay in place. Um, seriously, just, I just don't get it. Uh, her accessory is this circle. Uh, the instructions say that it can peg into here to be like kind of a buckler thing. And the wheel is designed to come off by by design. And then it splits open. Like if you want a little bit less kibble hanging off of her back, you can instead open this up and turn it into the world's stupidest gun. That is the stupidest weapon I have ever seen. However, there is something else you can do with this. Rather than have her hold it like the world's dumbest weapon, um, you can actually gently lower her backpack like this, revealing a peg hole behind her head. Then this goes into here, and then you push this back up. It doesn't really peg, it's just kind of resting there. And then you can kind of create a different look for RC where she has her wheels behind her shoulders. And, um, you know what? That is kind of the thing that IDW Chromia had going on. 
I mean, not quite, but I do remember that Chromia in the IDW comic had her wheels behind her shoulders. So I think they might be trying to get that look. It could also be the look of Energon RC, because Energon RC did have her wheels behind her shoulders as well. Um, and, uh, and this could even kind of be a Flame Wars thing, because Flame War was originally a repaint of of RC from the uh, from the Energon era, so wheels behind the shoulders. So that could be that their their attempt to do that. Like, okay, I'll grant that is kind of cool, and it is a better use of her wheel than just hanging off of the bottom of her backpack. This way, it does make her back look a little bit more compact. Um, but I don't like the way that those wheels are just kind of like dangling on the sides of her shins. That that looks truly pathetic. There isn't even any deco on the inside of the wheel to make it look more interesting. It's just empty, hollow plastic there. I I don't like this. I do not like this. Wow, like Hasbro, you have not had a very good track record with RC lately, have you? Sorry if that jump cut need seemed obvious. I just needed to charge the battery up a little bit. And uh, the little circle thing she comes with can come apart. And then each half will peg into holes on her forearms. Uh, so you can get, um, I think this is supposed to harken back to the, um, to the forearm blades that she had in Transformers Prime. But they look, they look positively weird. Like they are not shaped like blades at all. They just, uh, nope. She just looks like she has... I don't know. They're, they're too. They're too circular. They don't. They don't look sharp on her arms at all. They look weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't like them. I. I don't like them. Yeah. So like, out of all of this, the only thing that I really think is a good idea is that the wheel can change its kibble. Like the way the wheel hang, the way the wheel hangs off the back is kibble. Like. That wasn't really handled very... That was the one thing that the original Transformers Prime mold didn't do right. Um, so, like, the fact that the kibble can be rearranged into a more aesthetically pleasing form, I will accept that, even if it makes her... It makes her look different from the original G1... From the original Prime depiction. Um, but it also makes her more her own. And plus, it opens repaint potential. But then again, it just makes me wish that this was those repaints instead of this. Um, yeah, like, I feel like we didn't need Prime RC I, as a, re realized as a G1 character. I think that we would have been very happy just leaving RC the way she was and, um, you know, like, using this slot for a different character. Like, I would have bought this if it was a different character like if this was if this was flame war that would have been great or you know what do you know who actually needs a um you know a character from transformers prime that actually needs to have a g1 reboot yeah i'm i'm bringing up the star trek transformers crossover comic because in case anyone forgot this comic had arachnid reimagined as a G1 character and you know what look at that that kind of looks like this the shape of the torso like just change the arm just change the way the arms are a little bit like like put the thick part in her shoulders instead of her forearms and that's that that can work this if you've turned into a helicopter instead of a motorcycle would totally be a tr an, an air arachnid in g1 form and we all know that air arachnid needs this more because she never had a good toy like in fact her toy from transformers prime was one of the worst transformers toys ever well i will admit um she's a little bit shorter but uh, I hate that the bar is set so low, but I still like this better than the G1 RC. I mean, like, uh, she may not feel as sturdy as an action figure, but at least she has more of a transformation thing. Like, there's parts of her vehicle that are actually part of her instead of the whole thing being strapped up on her back, even if uh, pieces of kibble are just kind of hanging off of her. But anyway, we all know the what comparison we really want to see. 
Yeah. Yep, there's flare up. Why did I bring up flare up? Well, because my proper RC is in storage and also I just kind of wanted to vary up the color palette here. So flare up is straight up a repaint. She is the G1 the the prime RC just in different colors and you can see like um like there was very little to improve on this. In fact, this figure was so good that it got remolded into Chromia and put into the Generations line almost as is. Like, this figure looked good enough that it was already capable of going into the Generations toy line, even though it was one of the cartoon toys. This one, like, it's a Generations line figure, but it doesn't feel as good. I mean... The, it's not like the backpack kibble is that much smaller and like I said like really just the, the only reason it's not bigger than it is is because you can part form the wheels off if you really wanted to but um in in actuality like everything else about the figure aside the little bit of improvement in the back kibble aside like like this figure is more slender it's more solidly built it has an actual back the wheels are better stored inside the shins so it looks you know it looks you know generally better this one just literally has kibble hanging off of it um it has no back it's uh, it's just not as good a toy it's just it does not look as good it really does not look as good I'm I'm really sorry to have to say that, but man, <clears throat> I, I really wish that I could like this more because, like I said, it's my favorite version of my favorite character, and I hate having to say bad things about it. But let's get her into her vehicle mode so we can check that out. Oh boy, did I hate that transformation. It's awful. It's just terrible. There's parts that have to clip past each other. And of course, there's the fact that nothing on the stupid thing holds itself together in any way until the last step when these two flaps fold out and peg into the sides. And like, that is a very tense connection. You're actually putting tension on the parts to force them into place. And if it's off, then the whole thing is just a mess that does not hold together anywhere oh man that's exactly what i want in my transformers huh i want something that feels like it's gonna literally pop apart at any moment and is held together only by the friction of two small tabs <laughs> oh, it looks okay i mean it's not nothing too egregious i mean like the blue paneling like eh. I mean, there's a lot more, like, robot parts, like, there's her shoulders, there's her thigh, like, it's not very well hidden too much. I mean, again, the, the actual Transformers Prime motorcycle was such a sexy little crotch rocket. And um, aside from her visible hands there, it did a really good job at disguising the fact that there's a robot inside of there. And, uh... I don't know, this, I don't like this. It's not, it's not bad, but I. it's just that, when did Transformers Prime come out? I'm pretty sure Transformers Prime came out not too long after the movie was released. Like the first movie back in 2007. So like, this is a toy that I'm pretty sure is more than 10 years old and it's better in every way i mean no no let, let's get this out let, let's get this out here it's over 10 years old and it's from the cartoon line now the cartoon line was always supposed to be like subordinate to the actual generations line so like theoretically the generations figures are always supposed to be better than the cartoon figures but here's a cartoon figure that is blatantly superior in almost literally every way to this thing <laughs> like i don't like it i really don't like it man <laughs> Um, it's not, a, like, again, it's not a terrible looking motorcycle mode, but the transformation is not fun. The instructions are bad. 
and it doesn't feel like it's pegging the together very securely. And um, her little disc weapon thing, it can peg into what used to be the forearms, like this. Mm hmm. Or you can peg them in here where the wheel goes, which is a little better, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, doesn't look like it would do much there anyway, but I don't know. I guess you can, like, um, do a spin out and then it becomes an axe, I guess. Uh, and... What is this? Can this? I guess they can peg into each other this way too, for whatever good that does. I don't know. Oh, I'm not sure I like this. Like, oh, I'm sure I don't like it, is what I should say. Um, yeah, like, ah. I mean, favorite version of favorite character toy I don't like. Huh. I'm, um, well, uh, I, I wish I wasn't so negative in this review, but I guess that's everything. I said everything I can about this figure, and the fact of the matter is, like, it's outdone by a toy that's more than 10 years older than it. Uh, and I can't help but feel that that's just an, a negative reflection on how Hasbro is treating the toys now. Hmm. I wish that I could have a bit more of a positive spin to put at the end of this video, but I guess all I can really do now is sign off.